measured earthquake and in California the game here, Mark, right just so. yesterday. And we can feel tremors here well, the, in the, the building. The score clock, score clock is, is shifting ever so slightly. So people are heading to the exits as we speak. In July of 2019, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake that occurred in Ridgecrest, California, stopped a basketball game several hundred miles away in Las Vegas. The arena was shaking, the jumbotron overhead was swaying, and the game was called. But to put into perspective how powerful a 7.0 magnitude earthquake is, you have to understand the Richter scale, which is based on a system of 10. So according to the chart that I've provided, a 7.0 magnitude earthquake is equivalent to 20 billion kilograms of dynamite. That's enough power to light up the city of New York for an entire year. So just imagine an 8.0 or a 9 or 10.0 magnitude earthquake. Those are extremely scary and they're catastrophic because they're so much stronger to a 1.0 earthquake. So the Richter scale is a system of 10, which means every step represents a tenfold increase. So a 2 is 10 times stronger than a 1. A 3 is 100 times stronger than a 1. A 4 is 1,000 times stronger than a 1.0 magnitude earthquake. A 5 is 10,000 times. So again, every step, just add another zero, okay? It represents a tenfold increase. When you get to a 7, a 7 is now 1 million times stronger compared to a 1. An 8 is 10 million. And a 9 would be 100 million times stronger. So by the time you get to 10, okay, it's catastrophic because this earthquake is 1 billion times stronger compared to a 1.0 magnitude earthquake. So just to reiterate, the system of measurements in the United States is extremely cluttered and the conversion factors are just all over the place. But with the metric system, they use a base 10 system. It's based on the power of 10 and they'll use Greek prefixes to let you have an idea of what the conversion factors might be. So I think it's less cluttered and it's a lot more effective. Meanwhile, the metric system is based on a system of 10. So if you look at the prefixes to the left, okay, so every step that you go up or every step that you go down represents either a tenfold increase in scale or a tenfold decrease. So eventually you start getting into this really easy to understand system where one meter is equal to 10 decimeters. So I'm going down on the scale, starting at the base unit. And then from deci, the next step is centi. So there's 100 centimeters in 10 decimeters. And then if you go down again on that ladder or that scale, whatever you want to call it, you have 1,000 millimeters is equal to 100 centimeters is equal to 10 decimeters is equal to 1 meter. Meanwhile, if you start at kilometers, which is now above the base unit, it's three steps above it, you would have one kilometer is equal to 10 hectometers is equal to 100 decameters and then you arrive back at the base unit again you would have a thousand meters so it's based on a system of tens and i'll give you more examples in the next clip this tool is called scale of the universe and basically what it allows you to do is you can zoom in and zoom out and you can compare the relative sizes of different units in the metric system so the most important thing to keep track of is the numbers that are in the lower right of your screen. So right now, this thing is at 10 to the 0 power. 10 to the 0 is a 1. So these are all things that are in the realm or the neighborhood or the magnitude of 1 meter. For example, yourself, human beings. Okay, We're about 1.7 meters tall. A basketball, a dodo bird, a beach ball. These are things that are relative to 1 meter. Okay, which is the base unit of length or distance in the metric system. Now, if I zoom in, we start to see things or objects or animals that are much smaller than human beings. Okay, and they're smaller than one meter in length. So you can see there the number is now getting negative, right? The exponent's getting negative because that indicates you're zooming in and you have to use smaller units to describe the sizes of these objects. So by the time I get to 10 to the minus three, 
I've now arrived at millimeter, and the prefix milli in Greek means one thousandth. Okay, so these are things that are one thousand times smaller than you. Things like dust mites, bacteria, a grain of salt, a grain of sand. Okay, now I can zoom in even further, and we start to see skin cells, okay, organelles that you learned about in biology, chromosomes, and 10 to the minus 6, if you look on your prefix chart, the prefix for that is micro. Okay, so basically the prefix is a name for a number. So micro means one one millionth. These objects here in front of me, like this virus here, or this violet light wavelength, these are all things in the neighborhood of around one micrometer things that are about one million times smaller than you, okay? And we can continue on, because there are things much smaller than that, okay? Now we start seeing phospholipid bilayer, uh, an alpha helix, molecules, 10 to the negative nine is nano. And nano just means it's a small number. It's in the neighborhood of 10 to the negative nine, or this number that's listed down here, 0 0.00000000001 meter, or one, one billionth of a meter. Okay, so now we start seeing atoms. There's a hydrogen atom, a helium atom, and pico is one one trillionth. And you also have units like femto. You start seeing the nucleus of an atom. We'll learn about the nucleus later on. It's basically just the protons and neutrons that make up your atom. Okay, lengths shorter than this are not confirmed. Range of the weak force. We're gonna learn about some of these things later on. Quarks, we won't really get into in this class, but you can zoom all the way until the end. Okay, there's some really strange units, okay, like yocto, okay, is a prefix, but we're not going to do conversions involving yocto, it's just beyond this class, so you don't really have to worry about it, but there are scientists who study these really extreme small lengths, and this is what you get at the end, 10 to the minus 35th power, so these are things that are really small, okay? smaller than one meter so we were zooming in so now i'm going to zoom all the way back out and then we'll go the opposite direction okay and so let's come back we're now at 10 to the zero which is one meter and we're going to zoom out all right zooming out in the opposite direction so now our exponent is increasing and it's a positive number so these are bigger units than one meter so you can already see animals that are bigger than you, elephants, giraffes, a T-Rex, there's an oak tree there, objects that are bigger than you, okay? These are objects on the scale of 10 squared, 10 to the second power, which is 100 times. These are all things 100 times bigger than you. And by the time you get to 10 to the third power, 10 to the third, if you look on the prefix chart, is kilo. So the prefix kilo means 1,000. These are all things in the realm of being a thousand times bigger than you. So the Eiffel Tower, the Titanic, the Half Dome in Yosemite, the Burj Khalifa, okay? It's within the neighborhood, okay? It's not perfect. Some of these could be like 10 to the 3.5, 10 to the fourth power. But the idea is if your exponent is increasing, you're getting bigger and bigger things, okay? And so now as I continue to zoom out. We're now talking about the sizes of small states. There's California, small countries, small moons, and even small planets. Now, I may have skipped over one. Let's go back. Okay, 10 to the 6 is mega. Okay, so a mega is 1 million. That's what it means. These are things 1 million times bigger than you. So it's going back to the theme of the power of 10. 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, so on and so forth. Okay, there's Minecraft world right there, 10 to the 8th power. Saturn, the sun, 
and there are stars much bigger than our own sun okay the sun is a star and these are massive giant stars okay the scale is incredible there's terra terra is 10 to the 12th so that's a whole lot of zeros and now you're talking about like astronomical distances things that you would find in the universe galaxy to galaxy so on and so forth a peta is 10 to the 15th so these are just really long distances okay and I'm not even all the way at the end yet but just to zoom keep zooming out you'll see that okay now we are talking about galaxies and Virgo clusters there's a yatta meter okay and then at the end that's the observable universe so going from big to small again just real fast okay and we're gonna go all the way until the end but the point is there are different prefixes and units that allow us to describe these lengths okay whether they're really big or really small and that's the beauty of the metric system so just to recap the US has a system of measurements that is cluttered and it's confusing because the conversion factors are inconsistent and with the metric system you just have to know that it's based on a power of 10 much like how the Richter scale describes the power of earthquakes every step represents a tenfold increase it's not that cut and dry in the metric system but it still is based on the power of 10 so you're going 10 a hundred a thousand a million 10 million, 1 billion, so on and so forth. So in part three, I'll teach you how to convert these metric units. I'll see you there and we'll win some more chemistry.